able to. I'll hand it up. You want to hand it up? Well, I mean, I think it's what we might look like to kind of just do a pack. Okay. To the solicitors to, to create a pack for okay. all the things they've asked for. Sure. And I'm sure because I'm not allowed to line stuff up until I'm sure. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Okay, let's see. I'll try. Can I just mention one thing? I briefly looked at um, uh, uh, Mr. Collins Rice's judgment um, in Angoli at first instance. Yes. I just skimmed it on screen. Uh, but it appears that she did indeed decide the engagement point. I've got the paragraph numbers in my head. She said she had been referred to no authority of any assistance on the point. Yes. It seems to us it could be quite an important point for other cases, um, even if it may not be in this case, particularly you've got another string to your bow. And I think we would assist, we would welcome the reassurance that uh, you and other counsel in the case have just checked whether there's any other um, domestic or indeed uh, Strasbourg, or I suppose it could be EU authority, yes that uh, bears essentially on the question whether the rather narrow approach to the engagement of Article 9.1 based on those wordings about word, uh, worship teaching and so on yes. uh, is indeed the appropriate approach. For what it is worth, my immediate thought, but I haven't reread Oweda with this particular point in mind, is it's slightly difficult to reconcile with Oweda, but it, it may not be when one looks at it carefully. But okay. if, if you could just course, have another look, yes. and if you do find anything, or any of the three of you, share it with the others and let us know. Uh, uh, of course, my lord. And um, having also um, skim read um, Ngole over the short adjournment, it does seem um, to make some of the points that I was making to your lordships and your lordship this morning about context and um, colour being derived from the words in Article. Nine one about what is intended by the extent of manifestation of belief, um, but of course we'll um, make um, different submissions yes. in relation to today. Um, and therefore, um, my, uh, my, my lords, my lady, uh, where I think I'd got to just before the short adjournment was I said that I would look at the um, issue of indissociability or proxy, um, because that is raised by uh, Mr. Diamond, and he says, well, actually, one can treat uh, what he says, of course, that um, the action that was taken uh, was because of yes. um, what was said, and he says that that is the manifestation of belief, and, and I won't retread the ground um, over in relation to that. But he says specifically that this is indissociable from being a Christian yes. or a proxy for being a Christian. And, and he did say it, and he does mention it, and he said we he didn't did. get much help on it. But, and, yep. um, and I just wanted to, to refer... Um, briefly, if I may, to the case of Lee and, and Ash's Baking Company, which yes. you find at tab 24. This is, uh, it was popularly called in the media the gay cake case. Yes. Well, I think it's probably not an entirely fair description, but it's the, it's the case of the um, bakery in Northern Ireland where the uh, <coughs> couple refused to ice on a cake a message in support of gay marriage. Yeah. And um, Baroness Hale um, gives the, um, I think, the only reasonable judgment in the case, but on behalf of uh, the other members of the court as well. And at paragraph 22, this is page 518, um, there was, uh, it was noted uh, by her ladyship that the district judge had not found that the bakery refused to fulfil the order because. Mr. Lee, the customer's actual perceived sexual orientation, she found that they cancelled this order because they opposed same-sex marriage for the reason that they regarded as sinful and contrary to their genuinely um, held religious belief. Um, and um, as the Court of Appeal pointed out, um, didn't take issue with the submission the bakery would have um, supplied uh, a cake without that message. And 
Lord said they would have refused. Well, again, uh, yeah, uh, uh, sorry, she uh, wants us to read the whole sideline passage. As or? I was halfway through, I thought to myself, I probably should have said that. Um, so I think, uh, my Lord, it's paragraph 22 and then paragraph 25. Hang on. Very well. I think I will read 23 and 24 for context. Okay? Yes, of course. Drawing the strands together, um, this is undoubtedly a case in which Mr. Page is a Christian. No, nobody has you know, ever doubted that. Nobody has doubted for a moment that he believes that children should be adopted by a man and a woman, and he has certain views um, about um, uh, sex outside marriage. But that isn't why the respondent did what it did. Um, it took the decision it did for the reasons that it gave and the reasons the tribunal accepted. 11.42 and 11.43. Um, and, uh, and in any event, uh, in my submission, it's plain that it would have done exactly the same thing had Mr. Page not been a Christian or had Mr. Page not had that particular philosophical belief that was put in relation to who should adopt children um, because, um, because, of the, because of the treatment of the reason why. And therefore, this appeal must, in my submission, fail on the direct uh, discrimination argument that is put before the court. Unless I can assist any further on direct discrimination and mindful of the time, I was proposing to move on to victimisation, which, as I said, um, before the short adjournment, I'm proposing to deal with um, quite shortly, because I say it's a non-starter, whichever way you look at it. Um, because uh, supposing for a moment against myself you were to um, allow the appeal in relation to direct discrimination and to find that what uh, the respondent did was because of a manifestation by Mr Page of his belief, then, then plainly it's not a victimisation claim. Um, because it's responding, the reason why it does what it does is the manifestation of, um, of religion or belief. It's not a response to any allegation of discrimination made by Mr Page about his treatment as a magistrate. Of course, that's not the conclusion I urge upon you. Um, but the alternative is that, is that if you accept the argument that I've advanced on the If he succeeds on the first point, he doesn't need the second one. Sorry? Well, he doesn't need the second one, or no, your it, point, it takes it out of play. Your point is it's exclusive. It can only, your yes. point is, uh, is, that, is that right, though? It could, I, mean, I think you have a... I yes. mean, Jason, I can say it's at this stage, having heard... <laughs> I think you're obviously right about yes. this, but not perhaps for that reason. You're obviously right simply because there's not the whisper of evidence that they were concerned, that they were responding to 
his complaint that he'd been discriminated against as a magistrate. That was not, no, not I, I, of interest I, I, to them. If, if, I, if that, however, that weren't true, there's no reason why it couldn't be for two reasons. No, um, either because, because, but I, I take the point because of the significant influence test. It's yes. possible in in the in a, in a hypothetical case for both yes. the manifestation of belief and the protected act to have played. Yes, significant and not merely theoretically, you could easily imagine such a case, but not this would not, not this, be with it. Not 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 this one. But uh, it seems to, to me from the way that the case has been put. That it is rather being put as an exclusive, it's, it's one or it's one or tougher case. Well, maybe. But in any event, uh, the, 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 my, my 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 second point is: well, if you accept, and there's no perversity challenge, that the reasons are the reasons that the TDA gave, then equally that is not a response to any allegation of discrimination um, by um, Mr. Page. And perhaps a slightly common sense point is. It wasn't an allegation of discrimination about the TDA. It was an allegation of discrimination about his treatment in, in the magistracy. That, that's not to say, of course, that that's not capable of being a protected act. But there isn't very obviously a reason for that to concern. Um, the, well, the an organisation may say, I don't like the fact that he's raising allegations of discrimination against a different yes. organisation. He may do it to us. Yes. So uh, no, that's I quite plausible. No, I, no, I, 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 but there isn't, I, I, I you say, that. the evidence. I, 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 I entirely take that point, maybe. But, um, and in some ways, Martin, the, the, the case of Martin and Devonshire, which of course was the case that you decided, uh, my lord, is probably a complication too far in relation mm. to the victimisation claim involving the TDA. Because what Martin was about, in, in very basic terms, was about some separable facet of the making of an allegation of discrimination being properly separable from the making of the allegation of discrimination itself. So in Martin, it was the fact that Mrs. Martin was um, suffering from mental illness, and that was why she was saying what she was saying. And then there were the examples, my lord, that you give at paragraph 22 about you know, phoning up the managing director at 3 o'clock in the morning and, and those sorts of things. That, however, is not really this case. This case is actually about the interview, the interviews, and I'm... Uh, particularly perhaps the, the Good Morning Britain interview, being used as a vehicle for two different things. Um, one, it is expressing, uh, it's, it's making the contribution to the debate about um, you know, who should adopt children, but it's also raising the allegation of discrimination. From the findings of fact that the tribunal makes in this case, it's the former, it's, if, if, it's, if it's anything, it's the former and not the latter. And uh, there, isn't a, there isn't anything um, in this case which... Um, it possibly, um, on the findings of fact of the tribunal, admits of the possibility um, that actually this was victimisation and, at the risk of repeating myself, there isn't a perversity challenge to the findings of fact of the tribunal. That being so, it's impossible for um, Mr Page to succeed in the um, complaint of um, victimisation. And having said it, be short, I think that is all I did want to say about victimisation, as I say, it is tremendously straightforward on the findings of fact in this particular case. And um, that then brings me on to indirect um, discrimination, and I do need to say something about group disadvantage. Um, in the final analysis, uh, Mr Diamond did stand by the concession at paragraph 91 of the skeleton argument that you must prove group disadvantage. It isn't possible this court said it in Mabai, it is not possible to read um, down Article 9 so as to disapply the requirement for group disadvantage. That, that must be proven. That must be proven. Um, and I say that that is sufficient to dispose of the appeal. But in any event, there isn't, there isn't a, sort of a shifting standard of proof. The standard of proof is always the same in a civil case. It is, you must prove your case on the balance of probabilities. Um, the question of the evidence that one might need in order to discharge that burden uh, was looked at very recently by this court, um, maybe just a similar being a member of the court, in the case of um, Gray and Mulberry, um, which was a case on um, philosophical belief in copyright. Um, and um, the case is at page 27 of the authorities bundle. Um, 
Lord Justice Bean giving the judgment of the court um, on that occasion. Um, but Deagles, um, and this is page 611 from paragraph um, 41. Um, he addresses the question of um, group disadvantage in relation to indirect discrimination. And he says at 41, um, well, perhaps, um, mindful again not to read out large chunks, could I perhaps invite the court to read 41, 44, 45, and 46? Yes, thank you. What's the PCP in this case? I mean slow, maybe because of the facts of the case. I just don't understand para 46. In every case, the disadvantage must result from action on the part of a claimant. But surely the disadvantage results from uh, action on the part of the respondent, or rather the imposition of the PCP on the part of a respondent. Uh, I accept, my lord, that the PCP is the action of the respondent. Um, which, and then you have to ask yourself, does that place people of a particular group at a particular disadvantage? But that when you are looking at the question of particular disadvantage, you are looking at whether it can be, there is something about um, people of a particular faith um, that can be said to unify them and to establish group disadvantage. The difficulty, of course, in, in, in these cases, in many ways, is that, just picking up on an observation that Mr. Diamond made yesterday, that religion is not just being a Christian or being a Muslim. It, it, it encompasses a whole, load of, a whole lot of other things, some of which might be shared by others who are of the same faith as you, as you some of which might not. And um, it seems to me that at paragraph 46, what the court is getting at is that when you're looking at whether or not there is group disadvantage, you are looking at what is it that unifies this group of people such that it can be said that there is group disadvantage. So in a WADA, for example, um, can it be shown that there is a group of people who would regard, and this is the, you know, the act of the claimant, that there is there a group of people who would regard the wearing of cross as something that they need to do uh, in order to manifest um, their Christian belief. Or as my Lord put to you yesterday, um, believing that it's better for a child to be brought up by a woman and a man may be a belief held by all manner of people irrespective of whether they have yes. religious beliefs. Yes. And that's why there may be a difficulty in proving group disadvantage here. Yeah, in, 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 indeed, my lady, but, but you need 
need to put some evidence um, before the court to show that there is the, um, unifying theme is I think the best I can put it is that there is something about the about a characteristic you share with others that can be said um, to, to bring you together and therefore when the court talks at paragraph 46 of um, what it the, there must be action on the part of the claim that is intimately linked to the religion of belief what, you know what is this manifestation of which you speak um, which is said to be a manifestation which is shared by a group of people such that you can say actually um, this is a manifestation which um, puts us at a particular disadvantage perhaps an, an easy example is the Azmi case um, the wearing of the niqab because there it was said it's not direct discrimination, it's indirect discrimination. It's not very hard to see how a ban on wearing face coverings places Muslims at a particular disadvantage because um, certainly to prior to recent times, one cannot readily imagine anybody else who would want to wear a face covering. It's, it's very unlikely to arise. So, but that is an action of the claimant um, in that case. Mrs. Asmi, the wearing of the face veil. Well, it's not an action. Well... OK, I'm not going to... I'll have to have, to have this out with my lady. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 it doesn't say which member of the court wrote which bit well, of the judgment. Well, yeah, that, that I was not feel <laughs> somewhat at a disadvantage, but, but anyway. I take responsibility. Oh, well, <laughs> Very that, you, well expressed. That, you heard it here first. But, um, but in a sense, we need... Um, I'm sure it's just me being slow about what 46 is meant to mean, but the important thing is what is your submission... Well, what, on the back of it. Well, what I, what I, what I say in, in relation to this is, I mean, the very simple point is the burden is on the claimant. If the claimant doesn't discharge it and he doesn't pursue a perversity appeal before this court, that, that's it. Um, uh, you know, he, it isn't a case in which it's said, well, actually, there was this evidence and that evidence. Well, I, no, I get that point. I'm not quite sure what you get in addition from Gray about that. Well, but... well what, what I say in, in relation to that is you, you've got to prove the uniform you've got to prove the thing that brings everybody together. And the difficulty um, that Mr Diamond faces, it seems to me, in relation to the way that the argument is, is put, is that there is there's a distinct lack of logic about the way in which um, the, the case uh, was, was put um, below. Because if one looks um, for a moment, if I may, um, at the judgment of the Employment Tribunal, and it's page uh, 303, um, paragraph um, paragraph 19. So this is where uh, one is dealing with the indirect uh, discrimination case. Um, and first of all, the claimant said that the uh, pool was all non-executive directors of NHS trusts um, and then he goes on to say that belief about adoption um, is a belief shared by most Christians um, and uh, it's a belief shared by many non-Christians but not shared by many other non-Christians um, and then when asked during oral submissions what evidence was relied on to support the claimant's case on group disadvantage the reply from the claimant's representative was first of all group disadvantage needing to overcome um, and the Bible says that homosexuality is an abomination um, but that um, makes no sense um, on the facts of this case because the claimant doesn't express on his own case doesn't express the view that homosexuality is a sin, what he says is, I think that children are best brought up by a mother and a father, and I regard all sex outside marriage as sinful. Um, and therefore, um, people who are not heterosexual married couples um, shouldn't adopt um, children. But that has nothing to do, it's not linked well, to... Well, I suppose uh, we have to be careful room. about this. I mean, part of the problem is it's very unclear what the PCP is said to be, but in the interview with um, on Good Morning Britain, yes, he, at least in the passages we've seen, expresses 
two views. One about being brought up by a, a, a mother and a father. Yeah. Uh, which, in principle, I suppose, you could believe even if you had no views about homosexuality at all. Yes. And then secondly, a view that homosexual conduct, homosexual sexual activity is sinful. Yes. Well, and you're saying that the, the two aren't the same thing. Well, they're, they're, they're not the same thing. In fact, the, and the, the, um, the passage from the, the interview, um, which is at page 297, in fact, Mr. Page disavows um, uh, what, what, what he says is, is this. I mean, he's asked the question, do you think being gay is unnatural? And he says it's not what's best for the child. Um, that wasn't the question I asked you. Do you think being gay is unnatural? Being homosexual, in scripture, it doesn't say that being homosexual is good or bad. So he isn't expressing yeah. the view. Well, I think he's expressed the view elsewhere, which I think... I mean, I, he, he, I, I, I believe to be, uh, as it were, mainstream yeah. Christian belief, whatever you may believe about homosexual activity, that yeah. being homosexual is not sinful. I having a homo homosexual inclination. Yes. It, it, it's, um, that, so there's nothing unusual or surprising about that. Um, and then he goes on and makes that very, that, 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 that very point, that what's wrong is homosexual activity, by what yes. he clearly means sexual activity. Indeed, but what, what it carries on, what is wrong is homosexual activity, really, yes, as sex outside marriage is not right. Yes. So it's not, on, on his case, it's not about homosexual activity per se, um, homosexual sexual activity per se, it's actually about sexual activity outside of marriage. That is what he says um, is, is the thing that he objects to, and therefore people who are not married to each other, and on, on his analysis you can't be married to somebody who is of the same sex as you, um, that is wrong, the, the, those are people who in his view should not adopt children. But that is not the same as what is being asserted as being his case to the employment tribunal, which is the share the, the, the shared belief of our, of this of the group of which I am a member is that homo, that homosexuality is a sin. There's a there's a there's a, there's a, there's a disconnect between what the claimant says. You may be I think you may be being over over analytical about it. I mean, I'm all for being analytical, but the, uh, um, anyway, I'll have to think about it. Yeah. And um, well, I, I, I think I've, I've made the point. Um, and then the um, the PCP um, found to have been applied. Uh, that is at page uh, three two one and paragraph seventy eight of the judgment. a number of PCPs were, were relied upon. Yes, we can find those and, at, uh, at paragraph 18. Uh, yeah, and the trust and the respondent did and do give high priority to securing the confidence of LGBT members of the community. Given the sorry, can you speak up a bit? Oh, I'm so, I'm so sorry, my lord. Um, paragraph 78, the tribunal accepts the second PCP relied on was applied to the claimant. Let me just see what that was. In assessing the suitability of non-executive director for the office, the respondent gives a high priority to securing the confidence and or approval of the so-called LGBT community. The tribunal reads out so-called because they, do, they, they say... No, well, I understand that, but it, it, it's not... <laughs> yes, it's not a great way of defining it. I mean, it doesn't quite work as a matter of English as a PCP, but you see the point being made. Yes, yeah. and, and, and therefore uh, I hope uh, the point I make is, is, is an obvious one, is that having a private view in the sinfulness of homosexual activity or any other sort of sexual activity um, doesn't that, that view in, in and of itself, that the PCP can't place you at any particular disadvantage because very simply, there is no evidence here that the trust is concerned at all, or the respondent is concerned at all, about unexpressed views. So the mere holding of a religious belief or a philosophical belief is neither here nor there. 
um, and what the claimant doesn't um, persuade the tribunal. But it is not, it, it, why does that not put, the case I think would be that that puts uh, Christians, maybe holders of other orthodox religious beliefs, but let's just stick with Christians yes. for the moment, at a particular disadvantage because they are disproportionately more likely to express the view publicly that uh, uh, homosexuality is a sin or uh, cognate views about yes. same-sex marriage or same-sex adoption. But, uh, I, mean, I think, my Lord, the, the difficulty is with the disproportionately likely to express the view. Where is the evidence? I ask rhetorically. Well, let's take it in stages. Are, is it not likely to be... Uh, couldn't the court take notice of the fact that they're disproportionately more likely to hold the view? Well, I, my lord, I, in my submission, I think that would be a, a dangerous um, path to to um, to adopt. It may be thought by some people, but you, I, I would suggest that you don't have the evidential basis. How would you, how would you go about um, establishing the evidential basis uh, in a case of this kind? Well, it, it seems to me um, that given the particular facts of this case, the claimant would need to put evidence before the tribunal, not only that what he expressed was a view that was shared by a group. Yes, I think, you're, I think you're about to restate the question. Also, <laughs> rather than answer it. Of, but I mean, given what, what might the tribunal? Survey? You might well, yes, what, 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 what sort of. I mean, who. How would you have to go about compiling the evidence? Who would it be from? And well, I mean, a, a, I mean, an example that was canvassed yesterday was a, a you know, a, a statement from a religious leader. I mean, it might be, for instance, that you put, you'd um, adduce a witness statement um, from a religious leader to talk about um, the tenets of faith. Um, that statement from the religious leader... <laughs> might, might I'm not sure, just suppose you've got a, a, a the, the, the bishop could say there is, he might even say that as it were there is a correct strand in Christian opinion that is the orthodox view of Christian opinion or he might be less ambitious and simply say I know Christians vary about this but there is a strong strand in Christian yes. behaviour that homosexual behaviour yes. homosexual activity is sinful um and uh, that will be fine. But then the other side of the equation is uh, would not many non-Christians yes. um, say the same? I uh, it rather depends perhaps on how it's phrased. They probably wouldn't use the word sinful, because sin, sin is really a, in itself a religious concept. I, but I they think, might. I, I mean, I think. The, 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 there's, a, there's, a, there's a twofold difficulty here. Is One, it's not just about having the opinion, it's about expressing it. No, I know, so, but you've got to take it in stages. First yes. of all, if, if you have the opinion, yes. it might be reasonable to say you're, not everyone who has the opinion will express it, but yes. you're more likely to express it. than If 10% of people who have the opinion yes. express it, yes. but uh, 100,000 Christians have the opinion, then only... 5,000 non Christians, yes. then um, I hope my arithmetic hasn't gone wrong. <laughs> it is you're disproportionately more likely to express it. Well, I mean, I think you, it, it may be, but it seems to me that it's a, it's a proposition that you'd have to establish by way of evidence. That well, I, 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 that sounds very good, and I'm, I'm not, not unsympathetic to it. Yes. <laughs> I, I like evidence, but you've got to be a bit realistic. What sort of evidence? Well, I mean, the, this, this, the, the hypothetical statement from the hypothetical bishop might also address... Um, well, how would he know about non-Christians? Well, that, that, I think, is the difficulty that faces Mr Page in relation to this, this aspect of the appeal, is that it is by no means obvious that this is a view which, if expressed, is um, something which is a... Uh, that creates a group disadvantage for Christians because there are, the, the point is there are many Christians who wouldn't share the, 
you know, some Christians would share the view, perhaps there are many undoubtedly who wouldn't. But then, of course, um, the Muslim community, for example, one can readily see that there might be um, Muslims who would share that view as well. And but that doesn't particularly religious. help you, because the belief, if the religious belief is defined as the view itself, it yeah. doesn't matter whether it stems from a Christian no, or I, a Muslim I, or a Jewish Orthodox. I I, I, I take religious. that point, my lady. It, it matters. It matters certainly for the for the religious discrimination case, but the philosophical belief case. I I, I take your point um, because one would have to show um, group disadvantage if people who have that view um, were to express it. But that isn't. That, that, that subtlety, I think, um, wasn't really explored in the evidence before the tribunal because what was put before the tri what the reliance that appears to be in place um, before the tribunal was on an, an identified biblical passage that says that homosexuality is a sin. Uh, and then there's some, some reference to a petition and the um, article from Bishop Nazir Ali. That none of that engages with the philosophical belief aspect of the case at all. Um, and the difficulty with the religious discrimination point is, it goes back to the, well, how can you show that this places Christians at a particular disadvantage? It's, it's, it's disproportionate, isn't it? It, it, it? You don't have to show that it's only one group no. that um, gets it and that other people no. don't no. Uh, yes. suffer. It's a disproportionate disadvantage. Yes, uh, but, but uh, the, the language is it, it, it's particular disadvantage. It's particular you have to show disadvantage. That it is, Particularly people. Oh, well, that is, I mean, that, that is an important word, particular disadvantage, but not for this point, is it? It may, basically means that the group suffers the disadvantage. Yes. I think, mm. well, yes, in some cases, I say it may even be redundant, <coughs> uh, but uh, it really just means uh, the group, because of the yes. kind of group they are. But it doesn't mean everyone else has to suffer it. Yes. I mean, you, a classic example of a height restriction. That puts women at a particular disadvantage, yes. but there will be women who have no problem with it because yes. they're tall. Uh, uh, and, 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 so I don't. Whether particular is the right word, it doesn't really matter. But it, the, what my lord puts you, I think you're accepting, is that if there is a disproportionate disadvantage for the group, even yes. though not everyone in the group suffers it. Yes. Well, I, 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 I must accept that because yes. I mean, that, that's what the Supreme Court says in um, name and I can't now remember the Essence. 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 Contract, Thank you. Um, but they, they say not everybody has to be at yes. disadvantage, yeah. and, and that, that is that is could we, could right. We the, um, uh, the the material that the that the tribunal considers at seventy nine. That is the um, petition. The Statement of a pressure group and, and, and the bishop. That's, yes. um, I, I, it's hard to read, but I think it's at 91 in the supplementary bundle. Um, yes, I think. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's an article, I think it might be 92. Um, well, if, we start at, if we start at the bottom of 91, um, I mean, we've We've had the, tr the, the, the group within the trust writing to the trust. Mm -hmm. Here you've got at the bottom of 91 uh, somebody called Andrea Williams, head of the pressure group Christian Concern, um, saying what she said. Yes. At the bottom of that page and the top of the following page. And this is obviously all part of a big spread about this yes. topic. Yes. And they got the bishop yes. um, uh, to, to write in the middle of the next page, which you were yes. taking us to. And at the end of it, there's then somewhere where you can, uh, sorry, 95, then there's a, a petition um, yes. is, is set up. But I'm, I'm just trying to understand what in real life, because I thought the employment tribunals were meant to be um, user friendly um, and not to require Mori polls and so forth um, in order to prove um, things like this. I mean, it, Yes, uh, and, uh, and of course, my lord, I mean, thinking about the, 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 late, the, the latest, if, if I may, on, on indirect discrimination, I mean, you don't necessarily have to prove indirect discrimination by reference to, to statistical analysis. You can, um, and that, I think, um, was the point that's been made in grey. Sometimes you can take judicial notice of things. That can be evidence. 
but you still have it, the burden is still why on is, you. Why is this not evidence of well, um, a particular disadvantage? Well, because if if well, uh, first of all, if one looks at what the bishop says, is that um, at the bottom of ninety two, the heading is why can't the voice of Christians be heard, and then at ninety three. Um, he says, so just because of the pictures, it's, it's yes. somewhat difficult to read the text. But at the bottom of 92, he makes reference to the UN Declaration of the European Convention, but then it's line in, in the event is a particular dying photograph. But then at the top, intent on preventing Christians from manifesting their belief in the public sphere. And then he says, the implications are wider than that. What is said by Mr. Page could apply equally to Jews, Muslims, and others. So the bishop is rather shooting down in flames the disproportionate disadvantage point by saying, well, well actually, what, what is being said here, what, what's being stopped here, could, could put people of a, of a no, number... He's not expressing a statistical view. No, he's not statistical. But he is saying that actually, if... I mean, my, my, my basic point is the trust, the trust cares not about your personal views. It cares about... It can, in certain circumstances, care about what, what you say. But what the point that the bishop is making is that if that is the trust concern, is about what you say, the implications are equal to Christians, Jews, Muslims, and others. That's the They're talking about he's, he's talking about religious people. Yes. He's talking about religious people as against non-religious people. Yeah, uh, he, he is, my lord, but... Section 10 doesn't define religion belief as everybody who is religious and everybody who is not religious. You have to show that you belong to a particular... Oh, well, I'm not... Is that right? It's, I mean, that is, that is quite a big question, but um, I think that would be very dangerous to go down that route. Why couldn't you say that I'm discriminated against as a person of faith without having to say what kind of faith? Suppose, suppose, suppose it was um, uh, discriminated against people who believe who believe in God. Yeah. I suppose that one could choose to define one's faith in that way, but that is not what Mr. Page did. He defined himself as a Christian. That is the well, religious group. Well, all right. Then look at look at the top of the, the bishop's page, which is the um, statement by Mrs. Williams which links it particularly with Christians. Yeah. So what, um, but, what, but what Mrs. Williams does is she, she talks about Mr. Page's case. She doesn't talk about this is, this is This is, anyway, this is uh, but, uh, not, not a realistic exercise, is it? Parsing a no. Daily Mail um, uh, feature and a few loose statements yes. made by various people isn't the right way to go. I do see a difficulty, particularly, there's, there's a feeling which one must be careful about um, <coughs> feeling that um, tribunals are better placed to know about Christian teaching than they are about teaching of other faiths. Uh, we may need to come back to that, but I would have thought it was still pretty wide general knowledge of which a tribunal could take um, judicial notice. Um, at any rate, if they were showing passages in the in the uh, Bible, in fact, mostly in the Old Testament, but not entirely, making it clear that um, orthodox or traditional Christian belief regards homosexual sexual activity as a sin, yeah. and indeed, a point Mr. Page is keen to make, other forms of extramarital sexual yes. activity. That shouldn't, that should hardly need, need to be proved, should it? And it's very easily proved by looking at, looking at a, yep. at a Bible if necessary. Of course, there's a point that there are incredible variety of Christian belief. Yes. Many Christians don't accept everything in the Bible as applicable in modern conditions. But uh, I just thought you could take judicial notice of the fact that many do still adhere to that aspect of traditional Christian teaching? Well, 
It's to not. Which, to which uh, I think there are a number of points that, that flow from that. I mean, first of all, perhaps obviously the case that the tribunal wasn't asked to take judicial notice. It was it was asked to consider particular evidence, and we've explored. I think we've we possibly um, come up against the difficulties of the evidence that that was relied upon. It was very unspecific. Um, there is the there is the point about well you would need to you you would need some evidence um, to substantiate your that your contention that a that there was a shared view on the topic that Mr Page was expressing views about but thirdly I come back to what did Mr Page say I mean taking his case at the moment. He doesn't say to Good Morning Britain, homosexuality is a sin. What he says to Good Morning Britain is, I think that it's in the best interest of a man, of, of a child, always, yeah. well, for a man and woman yeah, to adopt. Okay. Well, we, we've got that we, point. We've got that. But, but the, 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 the point being, you do have to evidence the... You, you do have to evidence the disadvantage to which you say you have been put. There, it's no good to say that there is a group which would be disadvantaged. That wouldn't be a problem because Mr. Page belongs to that but he does, but more he, traditional group. But, uh, well, the, the point I'm seeking to make, my lord, and seeking to persuade you of, and and and, and uh, I, I may not be succeeding, is to is to say he is not a member of that group on his own on on his own case. Well, I, I see what you say about that. I, no, it's more that I and I think my lord and perhaps my lady are just interested in exploring the extent to which propositions of this kind need to be established by evidence, which I don't think is straightforward, because the point I made at the beginning about how perhaps, again, I'm aware of making assumptions even about this, there is a wider familiarity among tribunals and judges with, in broad terms, Christian yeah. belief, um, uh, than um, with other forms of belief and it would be um, it would be an unsatisfactory situation if you required evidence of one and not of the other so that's a point in your favor and anyway I'm sure the point could be made that for very well you might well have a tribunal which were people at least of a Christian background even if they were not in fact Christian believers but uh, in modern Britain that wouldn't always be the case so. um, certainly not um, and of course um, point that I think you may have made over the course of, of uh, the discussion today is that some things are more obvious than others. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, well, thank you. It's been a useful discussion. I, um, I'm not quite sure where, whether, <laughs> as you say, it's not actually how the case was developed. Yeah. So, um, And I wasn't, um, unless the um, court particularly wants to hear me repeating myself, I wasn't proposing to repeat what I said earlier about um, uh, justification for interference no, because well, that indeed, applies with equal force. Of course, like other aspects of this case, the ones perhaps you might say on which we spent most time, you have a fallback position under which they don't arise in the first place, as you reminded us. It's in the respondent's notice. Um, well, unless there is anything further I can assist the court with, those are the only two yes, that I, I wanted to make. Um, no, I think we'll rise for a moment and decide whether or not we I want to hear from Ms. Lee.
some of the COVID protocols take a getting um, used to. Um, uh, Ms Ling, um, so far as the issues in the magistracy appeal are concerned, we do not need to call on you. We would not wish to shut you out if you felt you had some important contribution to make to the debate that we've just been having, though most of it is on slightly different issues than the ones that arise in your case. Um, so if you were burning to add something, please do. Um, but otherwise, we don't need to hear from you. Thank you very much. Yes, Mr. Diamond. Yes. Well, it obviously follows from that that um, you have a right of reply only on um, yeah. uh, uh, the uh, NHS part of the case. I understand. Um, if I may just sort of deal with some of the issues that came up. Um, the first issue that came up is, of course, the interplay of convention rights and EU rights. I'll deal with that briefly. Of course, Section 2 of the Human Rights Act um, says that courts must take into account. Of course, I say must. And Section 3 gives the interpretive provision. We say simply, based straightforwardly on that, does a convention right arise? Does an issue before the court fall into the ambit of a convention right? If the answer is yes, our submission is the convention right should be addressed and it can be dealt with without going contra legum, to put it in that sense. On the issue of EU rights, um, that is highly problematic in, 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 in this submission. Um, as you know, the EU is unable to accede to the European Convention. The European Court of Justice ruled on that in Opinion 213. And the number of reasons why, and I only summarise a very complex point of international law, one, the Convention is subsidiary. It's a floor of rights. You're meant to Corporate to give effect to it with a margin of appreciation. EU law has primacy, must be uniform, effective, and direct across all the member states of the European community. And EU rights are infinitely more complex. They include the Charter, which we know has about 47 rights in it, some of them social, some of them directly political, some of them copied. It's got the fundamental freedoms of the EU, movement, uh, persons, capital, establishment, and so forth. And it's based on the constitu constitutional traditions 
of the member states. So it's a slightly sort of much more complex package. And on top of that, with the effectiveness provisions of the EU, in the skeleton that addresses the need to give effect to the aims and objectives, and Eggenberger, in our submission, was directly on point that you cannot have a national practice, a constitutional norm, established rule that Can you dispel this? I, is what you're saying, Mr. Diamond? I, if so, I'm not sure this is a matter which Ms. Criddle directly addressed, but are you saying that unlike the position of the Convention, the rights under the uh, Charter, the equivalent rights under the Charter, are directly enforceable in an employment tribunal? You're not saying that, fine, but I want to make the. Otherwise, um, I'm not sure I, I, what you are saying. I believe I am, but I don't think it's quite. When you say you believe, it's well, quite important it's quite, to know whether you are is. or not. I am, because the Charter obviously is incorporated by the Directive, but it's not quite as important. So which Directive? Directive 2078, which the Equality Act implements. And therefore, it forms part of the implementation. Well, that doesn't work. Um, well, if that's what you're saying, I understand it, but then that's, that's not what I was asking you about. So you're saying that the rights under the Charter are, are enforceable only in the sense that the Directive is enforceable? Well, um, I, I'm, I'm going to be treading, treading on eggshells. I, I'm saying that when a member state implements, implements a community provision, the charters incorporated in that, as are all these rather complex community rights, and this court becomes an effective protector of those EU rights, and that is the new relationship created by the charter, that the national courts of the states acting as protectors on behalf of created EU rights. Give me a moment. It may be my fault. I hadn't picked up that. Well, I'm not, with respect to you, quite understanding how you're putting it even now, but um, I hadn't picked up first time round the subtleties of how you may be putting it. My lady believes, uh, well, we can't at the moment remember the authority, something saying the Charter is not as such. You can't simply go to the Employment Tribunal and say, I complain of a breach under Article 10 of the Charter. No. You accept that, do you? Uh, I, 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 think I, I accept that it's when a member state implements the measure. Yes, I see. Um, perhaps I can ask you informally, Ms. Ms. Criddle, does that ring a bell with you? Do you know which authority it is? Back in Bush or yeah. something, I, and I may not be pronouncing it at all correctly. Well, you've done better than any of us. You've nearly got a name for it. <laughs> I, I think for I think if you could let us know after the hearing. I, 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 but Mr. Downs made it clear he's not putting it that way, he's but not. I think I would just like to nail this one down. But, 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 but to, to, to satisfy your curiosity, my lord, yes, of course. Thank you. Yes. Uh, okay. Um. Well, and then, if I may go on, so yep. um, obviously you, you will be receiving submissions on the interaction, whether it's religious speech or um, under Article 9. Convention, or whether it was Article 10, which, which we, we should pursue. Um, obviously, a case involving judicial review, whether the matter was addressed under Article 9 or Article 10, was actually not a relevant consideration because the same points were going to be addressed just under a more convenient label in our submission. I'll go do a submission on that. But of course, 8, 9, 10, and 11 all have the subsection which is applied in fairly uniform manner. And indeed, rather like the European Court, they very often consider a case under Article 10 or Article 9 and then say, well, I don't need to consider this under Article 8 or Article 10 because we 
we've already addressed it in this one. But they don't dismiss it. They don't say they may take a lex specialis position, but they don't remove the uh, relevant argument where there's convention impact. And in this case, we say the tribunal, in any event, did engage uh, with the Article 10 argument. There's about three or four paragraphs on it, and they're dismissible. It, it adds nothing more. It's not that this, if, if he'd been argued, it would have made a tremendous difference, and we would have approached this very differently. They simply straightforwardly say, nothing more, it makes no difference, and we refer to another authority that satisfies us on this point, and the issue ends. But there's no discrimination, anti-discrimination provision in the Equality Act that protects you from being uh, treated differently because of your the, the expression of... Yes, uh, well, th th that is correct. So the first point is, we say there is a convention engagement. But the second point is, that's why the emphasis was made in this case on religious speech and religious belief. And, uh, and so you don't criticise the tribunal for saying Article 10 doesn't add in this context. It's academic. It, no, I, I think it should have been considered because it, it does relevantly, there is public discourse and Article 9 and Article 10 can overlap in the same consideration. So I don't know if I don't consider it. I don't think it was a fatal error of law that barred an argument they could have incorporated many of these arguments, and we say he was clearly expressing religious viewpoints. The whole case is based on his religious beliefs. Well, what do you object to is um, you're saying, well, this, this could fall under Article 10, therefore it doesn't fall under Article 10. Yeah, I'm cut out because yes. there's multiple... Because it's just a... But it could have fallen under Article 8 if my private, personal views, or if it would have been a philosophical belief, perhaps it would have um, been more idiosyncratic, this is just simply sort of forum shopping in, or, or, or convention shopping. Um, the, we, the, the then um, my learned friend, let me address the relevant point. Then my learned, then my, um, just before I move on from the convention point, uh, my learned friend raised two cases. One was Smith, and that was a civil claim uh, under his contract of employment. That, of course, the issues we were raising were the wider issues of the use of a contract of employment to limit religious and political freedom. And this is a factor, if I may just touch on this, whether it's by contract, whether it's by equality codes discussed at paragraph 11.8, or whether it's... Um, by professional rules on barristers and teachers, as addressed in Nagoli, they're not designed to limit freedom. They're, they have contract. You, you can, in a contract, you can't sell yourself into slavery. You learn from law school. There's a limit to contract. In 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 this case, on an equality code, it's not designed to silence free speech, as in Smith. In professional conduct rules, it would be unacceptable to say you cannot practice at the bar because you hold views, well, I hope it would, unless it, there's a direct nexus. And that was addressed in Nagoli. Um, my learned friend very helpfully took you to 105, 106 with that balance. Balance one, it can't go that far. Balance two, we recognize professions must have some control. And I won't take you there now, but there's, there's particularly um, three paragraphs which um, we're addressing this point. 127, the Court of a, paragraph 127, the Goli, the Court of Appeal discusses the scope of religious belief and the impact of this blanket ban. Um, if you want to have a look at the Goli, we may. Well, well, it's pressing whether you want to solicit Yes, I do. Well, then, we're going to see it. Tab 25. Yeah. Paragraph 127. 127. Three paragraphs we say are relevant. I submit is relevant. What are the other two? 129 mm -hmm. and 135. And so give us a moment, we'll read them. Great.
Yes, thank you. Yes, so the first point, 127, is the blanket ban. And, my lord, this is what we are dealing with here. We're not dealing with any, well, I have, we're dealing with the use of these codes and practices to prevent the expression of certain unpopular minority views in our society. That's dealt with at 127. 128 deals with the... Sorry, issue, uh, you just uh, 129, excuse me, 129. That, that deals with the um, issue. But it's not reasonable expressions of views. That's what manner means. That's what normally means by manner, not reasonable expression of religious views, um, in which people, of course, as you, as you pointed out, my lord, free speech can be offensive, annoying, and irritant. It's abusive, racist, misogynist language, as, in our submission, uh, Mayor Livingstone did in that case. But as, but as he walked from the mansion house to his official car, he was no longer um, in public service. And paragraph... Can, can manner also mean the, the, the size of the audience that you select? Can manner, can manner no, include uh, the size of the audience? That, that is a false dichotomy. No, no, I, yeah. I was, no, no, there's no, a question. Yes. What was that? You will order. Don't, don't attack me. But um, yeah. no, like, we say that's a false dichotomy in paragraph 55. That I mean, the reason why is what he said, the expression of his religious belief, and the, actually it was the audience that saw it. Um, but it's actually a very illogical dichotomy because what they're saying is. It's the views expressed that are unpalatable that make us look bad. But as your lordships have already identified, if the views are so unpalatable, and you may think them, um, it's only a short step from public expression to holding. Um, but and then, and then again, it just say 135, they focus on the, the need for discrimination. There's no evidence that Mr. Magoli has discriminated. There's no evidence he would have discriminated. Mr. Page, just to say on this NHS case, and I'm he came from a successful business career into the NHS, you know, virtually offering his labour services for free in, in sort of his advanced years. I would have thought that would be the kind of person they wanted, with his skills and experience. He disavows any interest in discriminating. He said it in the statement in the tribunal. He wants people who need mental services to access the NHS. But he's also got a right to express religious views. And you have to have a common sense approach on well, the only the only instance of active discrimination um, that was available in in the NHS case was um, what he did in the um, magistracy case. Yes, and and and, 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 and these sort of appalling sort of character. Sorry, I was just pointing out there was at least one instance. There was well, only one instance. Yes, and I, we don't. I won't touch that anymore. No. But, I mean, the caricature that he would sit on the director's board of an NHS trust and say, I mean, I will not offer services to people. That is an absolute monstrosity that I refute on behalf of Mr. Page. Some of the other issues addressed. Well, firstly... <coughs> We say it's important to appreciate what our case is, and when my learned friend addressed the discrimination point. We say that, firstly, Mr. Page claims alleged discrimination on grounds of belief, as well as grounds of religion. And in fact, there are three grounds involved in this. Because of religion, because of religious belief, and because of philosophical belief. And in our submission, it doesn't matter whether the belief in question is characterized as religion or philosophical, they fall within the provision. Um, by, by way of incident, in, in the Williamson case, uh, which went to the House of Lords and it was found there was an Article 9 engagement, the act in that case was, of course, sp smacking a child. And smacking a child is not a particularly religious activity. I mean, a, lo a lot of parents will smack a child uh, religious or otherwise, be, when a child is naughty. But, the, but in that case, that was the act of religious manifestation that Article 9 hit on. Well, hang on. If that is correct, that's rather important. Spare the rod and spoil the child. Well, they were, they, they, they were relying on a prop verse of Proverbs. Yeah. That is the one. Um, well, 
Um, have we not Williamson in the... No, we haven't at all. Well, look, I just want to be clear about this. We asked um, for assistance on cases about manifestation of religious belief otherwise than in what would obviously be covered by Article 9.1 language um, for often the four things, but uh, worship, teaching, and so on. If you're right, Williamson would be a clear example of that. Well, it would be. I think, I think we were going to do a bit of a troll. troll. Yes, I see. Well, let's not ask about it. it yeah. Perhaps you can look at it. Maybe when we look at it, that isn't quite what it says. But if, OK, we'll leave that till later. Yeah. Um, yeah, so finishing off that point, if I may, um, Finishing off that point, um, obviously, um, on the, we submit on, on the direct discrimination point the correct hypothetical comparator is someone who does not share this religious belief and same sex adoption. Um, well, obviously, the other circumstances are the same. Um, it's, 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 it's doesn't it's, share the belief or shares the belief who does not. not share. Who does not share Mr. Page's belief. So the, the high, it would be a trust director who believes that same-sex adopters are fine or better than opposite-sex adopters. That's what we would say would be the comparator. And we, our submission primarily is that we're getting conjugated with motive and reason. And that gives us a means of introducing Article 9 or Article 10 of the Charter Everything in this tribunal focuses on what Mr. Page said. If you, in the findings of fact, he was speaking, the views are losing trust, people don't want to. And so we, our submission is um, that the concerns for the LGBT community, valid as they are, is motive. Of course, that, but the ground. And but now you're just repeating points you've made. Okay, it's not a, not a reply to anything that um, was but the, 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 the comparator that you've suggested is surely um, is surely not right. The correct comparator is surely somebody who's not a religious person who holds the same belief. Uh, we're back with Mr. Justice Wilkie in whatever that case was. Well, we are, but I, I think if I may, I won't say any more if I'm going to repeat myself, but when, when we did the Delhi, there was paragraphs 104 to 106 where they, they actually, religion is so in... Well, we didn't do the Delhi. We did it, we did, didn't we? Not? Did we? Oh, well, I hope we did. I well, did. you didn't so, well, refer to Ladeal. You yeah, referred to a uh, Raider, but not Ladeal. Well, I, I'll just take you to that. I, 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 I was the risk of repeating myself. But, um, well, you're not repeating yourself. You're taking us to a new authority. On the other hand, you shouldn't be taking us to a new authority in reply. I, I honestly believe what I thought I'd done with at the moment. Um, it's tab 35. Well, let's see. This is a way down. Yes, a way down. Well, you said Ladella, that's what you're Oh, to. well, I'm so sorry, my lord. Um, I, I did, I did add, add, but what, what I refer to the case of Ladella. Well, you may have referred to it in passing, but you certainly didn't take us to it. But anyway, let's not get bogged down on that. What right. is the point you want to make? Uh, the point I wanted to make is they discuss the comparator and at paragraphs 104 to 106, and they, they just, it's a person um, without religious faith who would not want to take a similar position because of ask my submission the idiosyncratic nature of religious belief. And it's very personal and it's very... And then perhaps just dealing very quickly then and find, find it, this is one, one short um, group disadvantage. Um, we submit that we, we are not um, making a perversity challenge on this. And we, we are simply saying that the employment tribunal failed to direct itself properly on the low evidential um, burden applicable group disadvantage. And we had enough discussion on this in terms of documentation and the newspapers and the difficulties of producing sort of evidence.
evidence, and it's it's uh, some tribunals seem to nod it on, and he, he, even the case of Gray is taken judicial notice is taken on the issue of, I think, homosexual Christian conflict. That's pretty well known now. Um, but it's, it, even if you take the case of Mabat itself, which the Court of Appeal had to address, um, Bishop Nazarelli gave a statement saying, effectively, some Christians are Sabbatarians, some aren't that strict. And the tribunal then, in a sense, used that statement to say, well, it's not a core part of the Christian faith. But he, what he was simply saying was, there are groups of Christians who are Sabbatarians, or groups of Jews who adhere to the Sabbath strictly. And, and in this case, we say, all we need to prove are there, there are others who hold the same belief. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it um, uh, rather than relying upon uh, spread in the newspaper, isn't the tribunal entitled to expect, as appears to be so in, in, in the other case, a, an actual statement? Well, that, that, that may be something for your lordships to consider. One of the roles, as we say, it's a layman's court, it's a poor man's court. People who appear before that, those tribunals are very often unrepresented in any way. And if the evidence was insufficient, it would have assisted if the tribunal had said what was insufficient about it. What, what is the difference between a witness statement and an article? What is the difference between people signing petitions and supporting? And can we not take judicial notice of this? I mean, we've had so many varieties of it, from bed and breakfasts to, um, to uh, marriage counselors to now adoption of children. Or, and again, in Edwida, the right that marriage is between a man and a woman was protected by Article 9. That was a press finding of the European Court. In Edwida? Ed, in, well, in Ladelli and McFarlane, part of the Edwida judgment, there was an express that um, belief that marriage was between a man and a woman. And you, you can't keep going back and covering every point. Um, Lord, if you want to, have a, if we do have a look at Edwida, um, Passages I, I think I reference is 102 to 104. Actually, probably some. I think you said 104 to 106, but yeah, it is 102 where the court well, acknowledges. Well, I think that, that yes, Christian that says union. marriage is a union between one man and yeah. one woman. different point though. Uh, well yes it is a slightly different well it's it's still part of the scheme and I, I, I don't know whether we can keep uh, we, sh we should keep having judicial resolutions on another extension of whether that it, it would include a right to participate in a marriage service in a church well we know that may come up at some point um, So, my Lord, I, I think that is what I would say. Um, we say the convention rights are applicable. There is one disturbing feature that we, in our submission that is a relevant point in this case, is, and it's a point of quite a lot of these cases, is that holding lawful orthodox religious views, whether you're whatever faith, is somehow discriminatory acceptable, and that's what these cases are about. And we are silencing those views, whether it's Mr. Magoli, or whether it's Mr. Page, and or whether it's Mr. Smith, and people are going to get very frightened, and they are getting very frightened. And I sometimes say this, we've, we have a sort of twisted um, um, Devlin heart debate, where in the early 60s, when the Wolfenden Report came out, it was liberal uh, promoters who sought the protection of the law to vary from using the law to maintain lifestyle choices. We now, paradoxically, find ourselves 40 years later in a reverse situation where it's actually the Orthodox Christians seeking a liberal consent.
profession that they can express their lifestyle and be freely in our society. So um, the Lord of Matt sort of attempted academic point. Um, I shall um, sit down if I can help any further. No, um, thank you uh, all three very much, including Ms. Ling, even though we, we didn't hear from you. Um, we will, of course, be uh, 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 our uh, decision, uh, what that means, although obviously Council will be well aware of this, is that in due course a draft judgment will be uh, circulated uh, to Council partly for um, correction of typographical and other minor errors, but also so that, so far as possible, the terms of any consequential order uh, can be agreed. If they can't be agreed, we will expect short uh, written submissions which will be resolved uh, on the papers uh, uh, in advance of the uh, hand down which we used to say will be uh, in open court but the parties need not attend whether that is the case will obviously depend uh, on uh, circumstances outside our control but there is a procedure as I'm sure you're aware for remote hand down if um, hand down in court is not appropriate uh, we, we, I hope Council have made a note of the various points on which we've asked for further information. Um, all I was going to ask for, uh, my Lord, is uh, I think I um, perhaps slightly rashly said uh, end of the week when I didn't think that I needed to look again for authorities on manifestation of belief. Might I ask for the other side of the weekend with um, that extension in mind? Uh, I suppose so. Um, Inappropriate to say anything about to being a Sabbatarian, but I might have been working on it at the weekend. But um, it's nice to have an excuse not to. Um, <laughs> well, and, and in which case, my Lord, I'm glad to have been of assistance. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, when you say manifest, yes, it's on the particular point about. Uh, because I, uh, the, the, the note I have, my Lord, is that you, w you wanted to be shown certain materials that were before um, the Employment Tribunal and any submissions we wanted to make yeah. on that. Then there was Angole at first instance, yes. um, and then um, when we um, resumed after the short adjournment, uh, you also indicated a wish to uh, for us to use our collective endeavours to see if there was any if there were any other cases. Yes, I, I, no, I know absolutely. That it's uh, it's not generally on manifestation of religious belief. It's much. It's more specifically about uh, whether you can have a direct nexus and yes. so forth in circumstances not covered by not obviously covered by those four yes, words yes. in the end of nine one yep uh,